Hi friends, very often we have to relap transformers if designing power sources. Usually used wires in lacquer insulation. After completion of the winding of the transformer, we must clear the varnish at the wire ends for tinning. This is a tedious process and each has its own method of cleaning. The first and most common is tinning with a powerful soldering iron heated to the maximum temperature. During this process, the varnish burns out and the copper is coated with a layer of solder. But the process takes time and efforts, and if there is no powerful soldering iron on hand, then you have to tint the wire separately. One of the main drawbacks of this method is the release of a huge amount of toxic smoke. But if the operation is carried out with a draft fan or outdoor, it is more or less tolerated. The second way is to clean the lacquer from the wires mechanically. Sandpaper, a stationary knife blade, or other more exotic methods are usually used for cleaning. This method is more laborious than the first, but we haven't accurate smoke because clean, treated copper wire is tinned. The third way is a bath for tinning. This method is used in industry as the fastest. The solder is in a small metal vessel which is heated to the melting point of the solder. The wire that needs to be cleaned and tinned is submersing into it. After some time, the varnish burns out and the wire is covered with a layer of solder. No additional effort is required. The disadvantage of this method also is the release of a large amount of acrid smoke. But if everything is done under a draft fan or outdoor, it's no longer scary. Such baths can be bought at any online store. They are not too expensive, but not very cheap. So I think it makes no sense to pay for something that you can do at home with your own hands at minimal cost. So let's get to work. I still have cases from fake lithium-ion batteries which were filled with sand. One of them will be used as a bath. The design is extremely simple. The heating element is supplemented with a power regulator. I will use the PWM power control and at the very beginning I assembled and tested this part of the design. A link to the archive with the printed circuit board as always will be found in the description. And if you want your homemade products to look like a factory product, I recommend using the services of the GLCPCB company which is producing printed circuit boards. The factory will produce boards of any complexity and sizes of the highest quality according to your drawings. The prices are the most affordable, only $2 for 10 pieces. It is important to say that the boards will be manufactured in just 24 hours from the time the order was made. You can be sure of the quality and scale of production by viewing my video from the GLC factory. A link to the video and website of the company can be found in the description. Industrial devices usually work from the mains, but for safety I want to make a low voltage bath. As a power source I will use a 12 volt battery. The main advantage of using a battery is that we get a portable device that can easily be brought outdoor and all operations are done there. This is convenient and fast. Of course, you can find any other power supply with a voltage of 10 to 15 volts of the appropriate power and make the device stationary. Everything depends on your needs. The heating element will be made of nichrome spiral as the most affordable option. I plan to make 100 watt heater. At once I will say that for such a bath it's not a lot, but I will supplement it with a PWM power regulator. Adjusting the power, we will essentially adjust the temperature, it's simple. At first, we need to understand what the resistance of the heater spiral should be. In this case, as always, Ohm's law will help. We know the supply voltage is 12 volts and the approximate power is 100 watts. Knowing these parameters, you can easily calculate the resistance of the heating element. In my case, it is about 1.44 ohms, rounded up to 1.4. 
The resulting data will slightly deviate from the ideal because, when heated, the resistance of the heater will change, but these deviations aren't so significant. The heater spiral, as I said earlier, is nichrome. Bought in the nearest store, the wire diameter is 0.75 mm. The heater is heated to red. Next, on the metal case, we wind the insulator. It is better to use fiberglass, but at my hand only kept on heat-resistant adhesive tape. But I'm sure that it will withstand temperatures up to 350 degrees Celsius and even more. It is enough to wind two layers of insulation on the case, then we reel up the wire of heater, which was pre-straightening. We must reel up carefully, should be some distance between wires to prevent short circuit. Over the winding again put insulation, this time the number of layers can be increased. The bath is basically ready, now about the regulator. This is a common PWM power regulator based on the NE555 timer and a field effect transistor, nothing fancy. Field effect transistor is installed on the heat sink. You can use any powerful N-channel field effect transistors with a drain source voltage about 20 volts and a current of more than 30 amperes. Power adjustment is carried out by 50 kilo ohm variable resistor which placed on the board. The cheeses was made from scrap metal. The transistor is bottled to the base of the frame. It is desirable to use thermal grease. Connecting wires are soft, standard with heat-resistant silicone insulation. Next, take the worst solder that you can find, put it in the bath and turn it on. To begin with, we limit the power of the heater to 30 watts and wait for some time. If the solder doesn't melt, increase it up to 50 watts and again wait some time. Thus, we determine the optimal power so that the temperature of the molten solder is around 300 degrees Celsius, a little more or less. Temperature control can be made without contact using a pyrometer. Now it remains only to check the bath.
As you can see, everything works fine. Naturally, it is necessary to add the solder from time to time. I'm sure that such a construction will simplify the process of removing varnish insulation and tinning of wires many times. Links to all components for the assembling of this device, as well as ready-made baths can be found in the description. Please, don't forget to rate this video and share it with your friends in social nets. If you have any questions, please contact to our group of electronics. The link is also in the description. Now, I have to say goodbye. With you, as always, was Kasyan TV.